Good evening, everybody. If you remember, in the last episode, we actually had the Debian testing um, session up and running, and we converted it to, uh, we upgraded the distro lists, or I'm sorry, the, the app uh, file to actually hit the uh, Debian SID repos, updated the system, ran a few commands, added a few other applications, and now what we're going to do is we're going to log into that installation and we are going to run a nifty command that I found called app clone so what this is going to do <coughs> is once it's ran uh, you run it on a, on a system that already has the applications that you want to reproduce um, onto a new system and it takes care of all the work for you instead of having to finagle with Synaptic or export a file and just I've always had been 50-50 luck on, on that process um, I've ran this a couple times it seems to work out pretty well so we're going to go ahead and give it a shot you'll notice in the root directory I have already did an app clone <clears throat> to the app from the applications that I had running on my daily driver, which is again um, a Debian SID. Um, both systems were updated. Uh, this one was just updated a few minutes ago here, so they're both on the same. They should be on the same level, except the only difference is is that my uh, daily driver is running a licorice kernel, and this one, as you can see, is still on the Debian stock kernel. And and the next episode will be going. Uh, and updating the uh, the kernel so that you can make use of some newer hardware some other benefits that go along with that so that being said let's go ahead and look into this this particular command a simple H will give you the parameters that you need so what we're going to do is get some information off the file that we already created And we can see that it's given us some information there from the host name, the AMD from distro is unstable, basically how many packages were installed, okay, and the date that it was ran, which was obviously just a little bit ago. So we're going to try at this point to actually restore. And as you can see, it's going out and grabbing the information from the Debian SID repository or unstable, whichever you prefer to call it. In either case, it's, it means the same thing. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to let this run for another minute or two. And we'll pause the video and then we'll rejoin once this is completed or near completion. So again, this is app clone, app dash clone. It is in the Debian repository, uh, the Debian uh, packages. It is packaged. It's also in, in uh, Ubuntu. Um, it's been a lifesaver for me doing some simple restores. Again, this is just one mechanism out of many that I'm going to show you in future videos on how to do some restores with as little uh, intervention as possible. So we're going to go ahead and hopefully pause the video. Okay, welcome back everybody. Looks like we're starting to wind this up now. It's going through the setup process, which shouldn't take too terribly much longer. And uh, we should then be able to verify that a couple of applications are installed. Again, we're not going to get too much further along. Um, just wanted to basically take you through this process and show you that um, some of the applications that were um, not installed are now installed. Uh, we'll do a um, NeoFetch and you'll be able to see that that the uh, amount of packages has definitely increased to somewhere well over um, 1,500. So let's go back and take a look at the screen here. 
Uh, yeah, it's almost there. Almost there. You know, a lot of people have heard, and I think whether rightfully or wrongfully so, that you shouldn't be using Debian, SID, or Unstable for a daily driver. Well, that really depends upon what you're using it for um, and what your mindset is. For example, a lot of folks will use Arch. I am a big proponent of Arch. I, I love using Arch also. It is cutting edge, um, much like Debian Sid. Main difference is, is that that is actually supported and patches are relatively quick. Whereas Debian, yeah, they have a timeline. Um, I'm not sure what it is anymore. I used to do some maintaining some Debian packages, just a few simple ones, some years ago. Um, but um, you know, to me, it's really it's really no different than running Arch. Um, I find it is just as stable as running Arch. Um, I have, and because I'm going to say this, I'm probably going to reboot my system tomorrow morning, and I'll probably regret the fact that I actually said that this evening. But um, as long as I've been running either testing or a SID, I've never really had an issue um, with uh, with the installs. I've never had a crash. I've never had an error out. I've never really had um, programs just stop working for whatever the case may be. So. Um, I'm, I've lived with Sid now for a year and a half. I'm fairly comfortable with it, maybe closer to two. Um, two, two and a half on and off. When I was going through my Arch phase, I went. Through, I spent about a year um, running Arch um, as a daily driver. But uh, I never, never had a problem actually with either one of them. Um, as long as you update often, that's where people run into problems. Um, I tend to um, update my my SID installations um, once a day, usually in the evening. Um, typically, you know, yeah, in the evening hours. And then if I feel I need to have a reboot, I will. I, I will only really reboot when I see that there's perhaps a kernel update. Um, but for the most part, um, then I end up rebooting maybe once or twice a week. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's the same with Arch. As long as you keep it updated every day. You never really run into a problem. Well, at least I never have. Um, and some of the people that I know haven't either. So yes, this is good. This is wrapping up. It's doing the the man databases. That's I believe that's usually the very tail end of uh, of something like this. So we'll give it a few more minutes. Overall, <laughs> without having the pause button pre-programmed. If I were to let this video go as it is, it's 31 minutes. It's not so bad, um, but I will cut off a considerable amount of um, <clears throat> time that I don't think you you guys need to view. A lot of white text, you know, scrolling past the black screen. Um, so uh, it looks like it is going to go ahead and do a kernel update. So yeah, we are definitely nearing the end. We'll run a quick reboot. We'll log in. We'll check the uh, the kernel version. We'll check the uh, the Neo fetch, you know, maybe we'll even look into a couple of commands um, that I know will uh, will at least produce something for us. Um, so yeah, you can see some of the applications that have been installed, or you know, as you can, you know, you're definitely going to see uh, a lot of applications. Ah, then there we go. So let's run a quick update DB. And then we'll do a reboot, and we'll sign back in. Oh, big difference already, huh? I bet it's going to give us... It'll be... Oh, look at that. It actually gave us... It actually gave us a graphical input. Isn't that something? Well, isn't that special?
All right, let's log back in as root. All right, so you can definitely see that the file is a little smaller now too because it's got some newer drivers in there. downfall. So there you can see we've got LightDM is definitely installed. We've got 2,000 packages. So friends, we're going to go ahead and cut this video as it is. And the next one will actually show the updating of Licorice, um, getting my uh, getting a username set up into there. And then we'll start uh, getting into the uh, DWM configuration and setup. So with that, um, we'll see you next time.